Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. My name is Kay Slater, and I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. Every month, we pick a new theme to explore together through art making and play. In these workshops, you can watch along any time you have time to make, or listen, or just watch. We encourage young people, families, and creative people of all ages to join us every week on Saturdays at 11 a.m. as we release a new episode. These videos are for you. Whether you want to join us on Saturday when they become available or any time you want to make. We're so glad you're watching. Have you missed a week? Check out artstarts.com slash explores dash online or any of our videos on YouTube or Facebook to check out an episode you've missed. Okay, let's explore together. Before we begin making, let's review the three rules of explores. We've got rules in quotes here because they're less rules and more like guidelines or things that we like to have in mind before we start making together. First is respect. We practice respect for ourselves by checking in with ourselves every day before we start making. Maybe we didn't have a good night's sleep or we're feeling really good today. Whatever it is, we want to take the time to check in with ourselves. We also practice respect by doing the same thing for each other. And if we're not making alone, we're making with other grown-ups, or other youth, or friends, or classmates. We want to practice respect by asking them how they're feeling as well, so we can be mindful of each other while we make together. Another way we practice respect is with our tools. That can be about putting them away when we're all finished or using them safely. If somebody else is waiting for a turn to use a tool, we can use our words or our signs and share. We can respect each other by asking how long they'll need the tool so we can move on to something else, or if we need it now, we can let them know when we will be done and tell them we will pass them the tool when we're finished. We can also practice respect by acknowledging the land. So this space that you see here is my studio space. And I'm on the stolen or unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations as an uninvited guest on these lands. One of the ways I practice respect is by acknowledging where I'm coming from and to be respectful of the lands, waters, and to the indigenous people who are here and who have been here since time immemorial while I have access to these lands. You can practice respect by finding out the territories and lands where you are watching and making from today, and by being the best guest you can and respecting the host nations, the lands, and waterways where you live. The second rule is that nothing is for keeps. I encourage you whenever possible to take things from the recycling bin. You can take paper that's already been drawn on or has writing on the back or is ripped and then you don't have to feel worried about ripping it up yourself or crumpling it or just trying something out. It doesn't have to be good or perfect the first time because it's not for keeps. And when we're all finished, I encourage you to take it apart. That helps really make it so that it isn't for keeps. Because if you know you're going to take it apart at the end, you don't have to make any finished thing. You can try all the things and ways of making. Our last rule is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good, or even to turn out bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful and creative ideas are good regardless of what happens after we try something. If you already know how something is going to turn out, if you've done it before, we can be open to trying something completely new and practice surprise. And if it doesn't turn out, that's okay. It's not for keeps. These are the three rules that we like to keep in mind when we explore together every week. Okay, let's get making together.
Hello everyone and welcome to Art Starts Explorers. My name is Kay Slater and I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. We're exploring a new theme this month. We're going to be exploring the theme of shadows. And so for the month of July, we will uh, we'll spend three weeks exploring different ways that we can use shadows um, in our art making and play. For this first week of the shadows, I thought what we could try exploring is something called opacity. Opacity is how much light passes through an object. One of the cool things when we're exploring shadows is that um, it's really an exploration of both dark and light. We can't create a shadow unless we have some kind of light. If you've ever stood outside on a sunny day and then had uh, and looked behind you as the sun comes down, you cast a shadow on the ground, right? But have you ever tried to see your shadow in a dark room? You've been able to see it? If you've been able to see it, chances are there's some light that's getting in somewhere, unless you're in a really, really dark room. So if you're in a room where um, maybe the door doesn't close all the way or there's a little gap at the bottom of the door and the light is getting in, even if it's a little bit, that light has a sneaky way of casting shadows on uh, any kind of object that's in a room. That's one of the reasons why when um, sometimes at night, especially when we're in a, a strange place, we're staying at somebody's house um, and the lights go out and we can't really make out what things look like in the dark because not only are we unfamiliar, but the objects there, they have, they have shadows that are cast behind them. And so all of a sudden these things that would be really simple to see and figure out when it was light out become something super new. And while that can be scary, it can also be really exciting. It can be really interesting to look at objects that we can't really see or figure out what they look like in the light. They become something new with shapes and shadows and just that little bit of light that they were able to steal um, to become something uh, interesting and new. So what we're going to do today is we're going to explore opacity with how much light passes through an object. So you've stood outside, the sun is casting the light on you, and you see your shadow behind you. And that the reason that you do that is because your body is uh, opaque. Opaque meaning the light can't transfer through your body, right? So the, you cast the shadow. I don't know if you can see it actually, because my light comes right down, but I can see underneath my hand that there's a little bit of a shadow that my hand casts here because the light isn't getting through my hand. Same thing. I encourage you wherever you have a light to take your hand or to take your body and stand in front of it. And you'll see as well how much light goes through your body. Probably not very much, but check it out. Actually, that reminds me, here are a few of the objects that I have collected uh, that I'm going to be exploring with because I'm going to be exploring along with you as we check out opacity. If you have these objects, great. If you just want to watch and follow along or get some ideas to try out later, that's good too. You don't have to have the same objects as me to be able to explore opacity and shadows. So what I have here is, do you have a light? And so I've got this light here that illuminates my art making space, but I also have a mobile device that allows me to turn on and off the flashlight. It's a little hard to see. So I'll turn down the light at my space and show you, there you go. So I have a flashlight, but it doesn't have to be a flashlight. You could have um, a light source from a lamp. You could be exploring outside and use the sun. 
uh, maybe you have um, a toy that lights up. Any light source you can find will be an interesting way to explore shadows. And then the second, the second item that I have here just says some objects. We want to try out anything that we can find. There is no wrong answer because we don't actually know what the light will transfer through and what it won't. And so I went into, um, I have a, I have a area in my art, um, my art making uh, room where I collect different materials because I never know what I'm going to want to use in my art making. And so these are some of the things that I've grabbed as well as I went into my recycling bin and grabbed a piece of paper that used to be wrapped around something because why not? So anything you find to make with today is going to be great. I'm gonna move some of these pieces to the side so we have a bit more making space here. Great. So I have a really dark area outside of my art space now. If you can't find a dark space to, um, to illuminate, you could also use a box and then use your flashlight in a box. You could go into um, a washroom or a closet, anywhere where you can get rid of any extra light that you don't want so that you can really see the difference when you turn on and off your flashlight. Okay, so let's start exploring opacity. What we're trying to do is we're trying to measure or see how much light transfers through an object. So if we were thinking like a scale where no light transferred through, and so we said our bodies were opaque, so if that was zero, and then 100% of the light goes through, so maybe a window. Windows don't typically stop the light, right? So if the light shines through, we, we can see all of the light. So I'm going to put a window here. And then in the middle, I'm going to go 50. So I've gone 0, 50, 100%. And then we're going to find out where uh, the objects we found fall in this scale that we made. So the first thing that I grabbed was some recycled paper. This is just a white piece of paper that was wrapped around something before to protect it. It got a little dirty and then I didn't really need it, so I put it into the recycling bin. It's got some interesting crinkles here, but it's basically just a white piece of paper that um, kind of feels like printer paper. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off the light above me and then I'm gonna shine my flashlight behind my piece of paper to see how much light is cast or passes through my object. If you have a white piece of paper, you can do this too. Okay. There we go. All right. So at the beginning, looking at this going, oh, well, maybe, maybe no light is getting through this. I can see the light here on my paper that's being reflected back and it's casting a pretty dark shadow here. So maybe no light is getting through. But a good way to test this is to take something that we know that the light isn't passing through, like our hand. Oh, so my hand is still able to block the light, which means the light is getting through this paper. In fact, quite a bit of light is getting through this paper. If you can see how dark my sh my, the shadow I'm able to cast with my finger is. But I've got the paper pretty close, right up to the edge of my light. So what if I pull it back a bit? Check out what happens. The paper's glowing now. It creates this kind of light box. And now the shadows that I'm casting are not quite as dark, are not quite as sharp, right? They're kind of fuzzy. So again, bring the light right to the paper. See how sharp and dark 
the shadow of my finger is, and you can try this as well. Then when I pull it back, the piece of paper, making this kind of light box for my paper. There, my finger's kind of fuzzy now. It's not really a dark, sharp shadow. Very, very cool. And I'm sure that if I brought my, my light even further back on the paper, yeah, then it's, it's really, it's really hard to see the shadow. I mean, it still does cast a shadow when I bring my hand really close down. But so distance is also playing a, um, a role in our shadow making. So how far is the light from the object that it has to transfer through and how far away the other objects are on the other side? What if I was to bring my hand on the inside of the paper? It doesn't really do anything to the shadow outside of the paper, but check out the paper itself. Right? Now it's casting a really cool shadow on the inside of my paper. That's a cool effect. Okay, so that was checking out a white piece of paper. Where would we put our white piece of paper on our scale? I don't think that it was as bright um, so it didn't block as much as um, a body, but it definitely didn't allow as much in as a window. And depending on where we put it, um, it was uh, sometimes fuzzy and sometimes uh, a really dark shadow. I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to put it closer to uh, my body and further away from the window and go paper. I'm just going to draw a square for my paper. Cool. Let's check out some other things. So I was able to find some packing um, plastic. It's like an envelope, it's kind of squishy. When I look at it, it's kind of shiny. And when I touch it, it feels like there's, um, there's lines that are running along the side. And I can feel it when I run my fingers along it. it kind of has these, um, these uh, crests and valleys along these horizontal lines. Just looking at it on my, my artboard, if I was going to bring it over and sit it on top of my, um, my sticky here, my blue sticky, I can actually see my blue sticky through the, the plastic. So I, I feel like chances are that I'm probably gonna be able to see the light through here even more than I was able to see it through the white piece of paper because when I layer my white piece of paper on another blue surface, I can't really see the sticky underneath. Before I turn off the light and I try it with this, one of the other pieces of plastic that I found was a sheet of bubble wrap. These are really big, thick bubbles for, uh, for bubble wrap. And so this is a different kind of packaging. I have one row of the bubble wrap that has been popped. So that satisfying sound when you when you pop. I'll do one over here. Oh, can I? <laughs> These don't want to pop. Oh, they really don't want to pop. Well, I can't make the noise because uh, they're not popping. Oh, that's really interesting bubble wrap. Well, if you had some bubble wrap and you could pop it, you could you could listen to that sound, or you could try exploring whether the light's gonna cast through this. So same as before, I can see my sticky note pretty clearly, like a, very, very clearly, other than where the, um, the bubbles aren't in between on the plastic. It's a little bit difficult to see, but I can basically see it all the way through. But I'm curious about how the light is gonna pass through these air pockets. Is it gonna be the same as a window? Let's find out. So these are my two pieces of plastic that I'm going to be trying with my light. Okay, I got my flashlight. Let's start with the bubble wrap. Okay. So I'm gonna bring it really close, just like I did with the paper. And I can use my hand to test again. That is pretty clear. It's almost exactly the same here. I'm going to pull it away. 
Yeah, that shadow is almost exactly the same. What if I bring my little, my little host character doop, 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 over here? Same thing. Oh, check it out. Yeah, that is a very, very sharp shadow. Okay, I'm going to bring my plastic over. It's almost the same. It got a little bit fuzzier, but it's almost the same. But the light isn't exactly the same because it's catching some of these pockets here. And so it's reflecting in some places. I'm getting some light reflection. When I move it, the light and shadow creates this movement around it. So even though it's not, it's not opaque and it's not really blocking the light, it's still doing something. It's moving and changing the light. And so it's casting um, a different kind of shadow than I would expect. And so I wouldn't want to throw this out. I wouldn't want to not consider using this if I was trying to create something cool with shadows because it creates this kind of cool texture and movement to my shadow picture that I wouldn't have without it. Okay, so that's one of my pieces of plastic. And I'm gonna take the other piece of plastic. Right now it's, it's, it's layered in half. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it like this and just see how much it allows the light to go through. Whoop. Oh, so that was doubled up and check it out. You can still, if I bring it really close, you can really still see the shadow. I bring it a little further away. It gets fuzzier, but the light is still going through even though it's doubled up. What if I only had one layer? Oh, my cat didn't like that very much. It's okay, just shadows. It's just shadows, kitty bobo. Okay, so this is just one layer here. Basically the same. It doesn't really change the light. Oh, but it's definitely sharper. So fuzzier shadow, sharper shadow. Just a little bit of a change, but an interesting change. Fuzzy shadow, sharp shadow. Cool. Okay. So if I was gonna look at my scale again, I definitely feel like my plastic is more on the 100 side or near the window side than the paper was. In fact, I'm gonna put two lines here and I'm gonna put my bubble wrap. I'm just gonna do a bunch of circles here. There's my bubble wrap, way closer to the 100. And then I'm gonna have my little plastic envelope. There you go draw that there with my lines on it. There we go. So on this side of 50, still feel like it wasn't really in the exact middle where it wasn't really letting in light um, and it was letting in all the light. So I still don't think I've found my 50%, my, my middle yet. Let's try a few more things. In the kitchen, I was able to find two different kinds of paper. And if you're, um, if you have somebody in your family or a grown up that, um, that you are making with or that has a kitchen available um, and that they're cooking with uh, parchment paper, this is what this is, is parchment paper or wax paper, which is what this is here. It might be really interesting to try this same experiment that I'm gonna do right now with these pieces after somebody has cooked with it. So these are fresh, clean pieces of paper, which I know in Explorers we don't use very often. Usually we like to use uh, recycled paper or paper that we find, but I decided I would find some just clean paper and I'll use this for another project later. But these haven't been used in the way that we would normally use them by putting them on a, a cookie sheet before we put things on or by wrapping them so that the air doesn't get to them. So these are brand new and clean. What would change with the light if you were to use either of these different papers after they had gone into the oven or after they had been wrapped around something? You'll definitely want to ask a grown-up for permission to use it afterwards and you'll probably want to wash your hands before and after, but what happens? I'd love to know. It's hot. It's the summertime right now, so I'm not really interested in turning on my oven, but just because we're exploring now in July, this one theme now doesn't mean that we can't try and explore this theme again 
another month, you could come back and you could watch this, um, this episode again, or you could just be making on your own and thinking, oh, right, there was that question we asked this past summer. Well, now it's a little bit cooler and I have a grown up who's baking or who's cooking. I'll ask them if I can use this paper afterwards and see how much the light changes when it goes through. Okay. Let's check it out. These are my two papers. I'm going to set up my flashlight again. I'm going to use my host, stand in front, cast a shadow. Thank you very much. Here, I'm going to turn them away so that they're not looking directly in the light because nobody likes to have a light shone directly in their eye. And I'm going to start with the wax paper. Oh yeah, so it definitely made a fuzzier shadow, very similar to the plastic envelope. I feel like it's got a little bit more fuzzy, but not 100%, right? So there's the dark shadow with, no, uh, with nothing in front of it. There we go. So my hand, when I bring my hand over here, right, the, the light is still getting through. You can still see it but not all the way. And it definitely changes the shadow. Okay, bring this over here. And now I've got the parchment paper. Parchment paper down. Oh yeah. Okay, so I feel like this parchment paper, I think we may have found our 50%. There we go. So just like the computer paper that I found before, some of the light is getting through, but not all of it. Do you see how fuzzy that shadow is? You can tell the difference between the light here and the shadow where uh, my little character is actually blocking everything here. So you can kind of see the shadow, but you can, can kind of see the light. I feel like we have found our middle object. So not quite paper, it was parchment paper. So a different kind of paper. So it wasn't just one kind of paper that I had to try. Cool. All right, well, I'm gonna put this here. So the wax paper, still quite a bit of light uh, got through. It was kind of like the envelope. So above the envelope, I'm gonna make a tube draw a tube that looks like this. And then I'm actually going to write the word W A X wax on top of it. Because in the middle, I'm going to do a roll again. Only this time, I'm going to go parchment. And then a line there because I feel like that's my 50%. Great. So I just explored a few objects that I was able to find around my studio and my house and in my recycling bin um, and uh, in the packages that I got during the week. What can you find? Where do things fall on your opacity um, sliding scale? Are they fully opaque like our bodies where no light gets through? Does light go all the way through like a window or is it transparent? Or is it like my parchment paper where some light gets through, but not all, where we call that translucent. So transparent, translucent, opaque. Where are the objects that you find and where, oh, sorry, what are the objects you find and where do they fall on your scale? We're going to keep exploring shadows in the coming weeks. Uh, I hope you come back and you check out another episode soon. We post all of our episodes on Facebook or YouTube or on our website at artstarts.com slash explores dash online. So you can check out this video, watch it again, check out previous weeks or come back every week for a new episode where we explore something new. Like every week, I'm going to leave my camera running 
while I clean up my space so that we're ready to go um, next week when we explore shadows again. I'll see you soon.